Hi and welcome back. So I wanted to show you what prepping for a vacation actually means when you have a dog and two cats and they are all on rock. I actually also had all of my pre-prep film for you, but somehow the files got lost. So all you get is the prep part. Okay, so the first things I do is prep food for my lady kitties. And this time I wanted to add some chicken strips because I like the idea of them being able to chew a little bit more. Now, of course, if I'm going on vacation, I'm going to be cutting it in much smaller pieces because obviously I am leaving them with a cat sitter and I cannot be sure that they will check if they choke or not. So I just wanna make sure that these are easy to eat, but at the same time, a little bit of a chewing experience for them. If you see me disappearing, that's when I go and wash my hands. I wash my hands a lot throughout the whole process of preparing food. And as you can see, I always have my cell phone in my hands and I always have a little towel that I wash my hands on, but I actually also wash them in the sink. So here I am portioning out rabbit liver that I actually drill. And you saw that I also added a little liquid that comes with it when it defrosts. And to that, I also add Taurine, and in this case, it's a Fellini brand, which I have had really good luck with. My ladies have reacted to a different brand, so I have been particularly mindful. So I just basically blitz it in the blender to make sure that it's going to be equally mixed in all of my portions, and then I go ahead and mix it. The last thing I add is a rabbit carcass mix that will give them a little bit of bone. Now what you're seeing here is actually half of my recipe because my KitchenAid is pretty small. Now you don't really need a KitchenAid, as you can see, I am just a little bit spoiled and I use it to help me mix it. But it definitely can be done by hand and I did it by hand for many, many years. I'm putting everything in my canning jars. I'm not gonna can it, but I just have a lot of them on hand and these are the beautiful wet jars. I live in Germany, so I'm able to get them for a really good price and they are actually for us a little bit cheaper than mason jars, but if you have mason jars, then that's a really good option as well. As always, I keep in mind that, and this is hard lesson learned for me, but I keep in mind that I cannot fill them fully because I always add a little bit of water, of course, to the mix and obviously they expand when I freeze them. So then I just go ahead and repeat the steps and you can see here is my rabbit meat that I am chopping up to add onto the mix. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was how to prep for you when you go on vacation, especially if you have sensitive animals or allergic animals like I do. And as you know, I have been working on giving them a little bit more variety in their diet, but I obviously cannot expect cat sitters or dog sitters. Oh, <laughs> and of course, you know, cleaning crow is always there. And as you can see, one of my hands is clean and I'm picking her up with that and the other hand is dirty and I'm actually not touching her with the dirty part of my hand, but there's no sense in letting that go to waste. She can clean that up. So as I was saying, obviously I cannot expect cat sitters to pay attention to the changes and to make last minute changes to my animal's diet. So I just wanna make sure that I don't have any surprises. And so I always stick to my tried and true base diet, which is a all rabbit diet for my animals. So wet jars have these 
kind of rubber seals that you have to put on. They are fantastic if you are canning. Obviously, I'm not going to can it, but even when I freeze it, it actually will hold the seal once they are frozen. So I still put their holders on, but I definitely need to put all of that on. And as you can see in some of these, they already have the little label with C for cats. And I will be adding more of those to make sure that both the lids and the jars have the label on it. So the jars, because it's easier when you get them out of the freezer to know whether it's a cat's food or it's a dog food. And sometimes I also prepare different diets for Britannia and for Caledonia, so then I will have different labels. And then obviously the jar, because once I take those little lids off and I defrost them, then I put a temporary lid on it and then I know that that's actually cat food. And here's the final product. This is a month of food. So then I get started with Iberia's food. She's usually the last I prepare because I always add some supplements and I don't want to have to clean the bowls and the Vitamix in between doing all of the diets. I don't really have to, but I don't want there to be cross-contamination, so I just prepare hers last. I always blend her liver to make sure that it's going to be present evenly in all of her meals. This is particularly important if you have an older dog. I've noticed as Iberia gets older, it gets a little bit more challenging to find new foods and to add variety and she's particularly sensitive the older she gets to different types of organs so i just want to make sure that she gets a little bit every day so that her stool and her belly are doing well And here you can see I'm adding some fat. Iberia eats a ketogenic diet. It's a very baseline keto diet. It has about 18% fat. And because rabbit is actually quite skinny, um, quite fat free, it only has about 8% fat, then I always add a little bit of fat. And as you can see, I also add some MSM for Iberia's joints. This is a human grade supplement because I obviously am looking for the best quality and then I blend it and then add it to her food to make sure that she will get the same amount every day. As you can see from this mix, this is actually quite a bit darker than the cat's mix. This has a lot more meat variety than the cat mix that I used. It has a lot of heart and it has some head mix in it. Um, so the head has really high bone content, obviously, and it's ground in there. But I really like the idea of giving her a little bit of a variety in terms of the, even the cuts of meat that she gets from rabbit. So half of it is done and I now prepare the second half. The other thing that I think is important when you are planning on going on vacation, and it's basically what I do on my day to day, but is to always have enough food in the freezer. I am preparing one month of food. I go away for about two weeks, but when I first come back, I don't want to have to think about coming back and then having to plan my animal's diet. So I always make sure that I have enough prepared in the freezer. And I also have a little bit of extra so that at least for the first couple of weeks, I don't need to worry about it. some of the bags actually leak and I'm not too worried about it. I do defrost them within another container so that I can be sure that it's not leaking everywhere. And then 
if I see that there is a little bit of blood on the counter, then I make sure to clean it up. The cleaner that I'm using is actually just a cleaner that I made with normal dish soap and then a little, little bit of bleach just to make sure that the water doesn't go bad. And when I am done, you will see I actually clean everything with a 10% bleach solution to make sure that I don't have any bacterial contamination in my kitchen. Now, I prepared a lot of food this time because I actually already have two weeks worth of food prepared, but I just want it to be safe. So I am using some other jars. Those are basically the equivalent of mason jars. They are an Italian brand that I use when I lived in Italy. And while I'm at it, I'm also preparing Iberia's dinner because, you know, why not? It's fresh and we might, she might as well have some. You don't see it in this, but I do the same thing with my kitties. And again, cleaning crew, taking care of things. Um, it's a little bit unorthodox, I realize, but the reality is if I were to pick it up with a towel, then I would have to basically rinse it down the sink and throw it out. And it's just a little bit of meat. It's Siberia's dinner anyway. So it doesn't really bother me that she licks it, especially because then I will actually clean it up and then sanitize the top of my counter. So I'm not too concerned. And again, you can see I have all the little labels on top of the lids and some of the jars also have labels, but these jars were new. I got them out of storage and I double cleaned them. Always be careful. Go ahead and dry them and make sure that I put Iberia's label on. And here it is, fantastic food prepared for three animals for a month and um, yeah, ready to go on vacation. So if you're interested in raw food, animal wellness, then this is the right channel for you. Go ahead and check out our, our videos. Enjoy your vacation, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.